It's always an exciting day around here when there's a new foundation I get to test out. This is the recently released Dior foundation stick. And I also picked up one of the recently released bronzing sticks. So I can't wait to get these on the face. Let's just get right into it. If you're new here, hi, I'm Rhoda, welcome. If you have returned, hello again, thank you so much. Let's just get right into this. I'm really, really excited to try these. Let's take a quick look at the packaging. This is the foundation stick. It's very beautiful, very luxe, very heavy, gorgeous, gorgeous packaging. I picked up the shade 2.5N and I think it'll work for me. Let me quickly swatch it for you. Here's a quick swatch. Yeah, definitely, I think this will work. Good job. And this is the bronzing stick, same kind of packaging, except it has a matte exterior. The foundation stick has a more glossy exterior. So that's good because you can quickly tell them apart when you're reaching for your makeup. These come in four shades. Three of them were cooler and this one is tan and it's number two, I believe. And it's the warmest, more bronzy of the four. The other three, are a little bit on the cooler side. So I decided to go with this one. Let's watch this one too. I was worried this might be a little bit warm. I might be right, I don't know. We'll see what it's like when I get this on my face. The foundation stick comes in 18 shades. It's $70 Canadian and $52 US. Let's get into some of the claims of this foundation stick. You get 10 grams of product. It's a multi-use foundation stick for a natural blurred finish with up to 24 hours of wear and all day hydration. Natural finish, it's buildable, it glides on smoothly, evening out complexion, eliminating imperfections in a single swipe, heat and humidity resistant, wonderful and has a blurring filter effect and can be used as a foundation or concealer for touch-ups on the go. I'm not gonna use it as a concealer today. I already have concealer on. I just want to try this out as a foundation. Okay, so those are the claims. Uh, let's see how it performs. On my face, currently, I only have concealer on. I use the Dior Forever Correct, and I use the shade 2N, and I powder just under my eyes right now with the uh, Dior loose powder. I thought I'd keep it in the Dior family today, you know, in the shade light. On my eyes, I use this Dior palette 599 New Look. Love this. Very subtle, but performs beautifully. I love it. And for mascara, I use the Dior Show 3D Maximizer and the Dior, I think Dior Show mascara, this one, <laughs> I don't know what the name of it is. There's nothing on here, but anyway, this is in the shade brown. So that's all that I have on my face today. As always, when I try a new foundation, I only apply primer to one side of my face. So I will be applying primer to this side of my face. I was going to use the Dior Glow Maximizer because I do love this, but it is quite glowy and luminous. And I didn't want that to kind of interfere with how the foundation looks. So I don't have a more matte primer from Dior. So I'm gonna use my Pat McGrath today. Make sure I only get it on this side of my face. As you can see, a lot of my redness is coming through today. Very, very strange. And just get it on one half. All right, so let's get on with trying this foundation. So I did pick up the shade 2.5 and when you twist this up there's a little click um, that lets you know you know stop <laughs> stop turning this around you don't want too much product sticking out so I like that little feature that it has and I'm just going to actually just apply this directly to the face and we'll see how that goes I do think this shade is definitely going to work yeah BK Beauty 101 to spread this out. Okay. Yeah, I think this is a good match for me. It's spreading out very, very, very easily. Okay, and I'm done. <laughs> that was that. Really nice. Let me see if I can build it up a little bit more just to cover my redness that I have here and Get it on my nose, my chin, and on my forehead. I wanna do one half of my face. It's not because I have 
the primer on. It's because I want to see kind of the side of my face without any foundation and what the difference is. Well, that is blending in like a dream, I really have to say. So I'm noticing, you know, a blurring effect, definitely. Application, very, very easy. And I like how this is looking on my face. There's a little bit of a glow to it, but nothing crazy. A little bit of a luminosity. And in terms of coverage, I definitely would say it's like light to medium, leaning more towards medium. But I think I need, my redness is really, really bad there today. So I think I wanna go in for a little bit more. This time I'm gonna pick it up directly with my brush just to see what the difference is with application that way. And you know what I'm noticing right now is that I can see darkness under my eyes. I do believe that the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer that I used in 2N might be a little bit too dark for me. So you know what, I'm gonna go over it even though I powdered, should I? Yeah, I will. I'm gonna go over it and see. Just to see, like I'm not gonna go all the way up, just over here just to brighten it up a little bit. Okay. This has a beautiful finish. Could I have gone for a darker shade? Yes, I am a little bit tan, but I think when I'm not tan, this will be perfect. So yeah, yeah, definitely. But I can, I can definitely make this work. This is looking very, very gorgeous on the skin. And let's see if it's sticky. This is supposed to dry down to a powder kind of finish, but I'm not feeling stickiness, which is number one for me. I hate anything sticky on my face and I don't like my hair sticking. No, no stickiness there. And it's a little, it's a little bit, you know, uh, I'm still feeling it a little bit uh, wet, but I can feel it kind of drying it down as well. So we'll see, we'll let that do its thing. And uh, let's apply on this side of the face. I'm gonna start off going directly in with my brush and see, hmm, that was so easy. Oh my gosh, this is pretty. Oh darn, I didn't show you, you know, like a close up side by side so you can see the difference. But I think you could see it, you know, throughout as I was applying it. There's a definite difference between this side of my face and this side of my face. And I'm gonna go up a little bit higher on this side as well. And I'm finding that the redness on this side of my face when I went in directly was covered up a little bit more quickly. But, in any case, I'm still seeing a little bit peeking through on this side, but it's not really bothering me at all. I don't expect a full, full coverage from this because it doesn't claim to be a full coverage foundation, but my goodness, the ease. And I'm talking right now, I would have been done. <laughs> I would have been done if I wasn't talking through and kind of inspecting it as I was applying it or am applying it. How beautiful. This is a beautiful finish. It's quite natural. Let me see where we're at. Yes, I can, it is, it is drying down and there's no stickiness. And I'm really, really happy about that. Let me see if I can build it up just a little bit more here. And this time I'm just going to kind of pounce it on and stipple it on just in my redness area right here. Yes. And you can build this. Definitely, they claim it's buildable and it is. I'm actually going to do the same on this side and see if I can build this up even more on this redness, yeah. Okay, so forehead looking smooth 
Oh, I have a little bit of redness there too. Let me see if I can grab that. Hmm. Well, for $70 Canadian, I would hope it would perform this way. And you know, it was really, really easy to apply. So it kind of spreads out extremely, extremely easily. And so you don't have to worry about like patches or areas where your foundation isn't present. Like it really, really is so easy to apply. I have to say that. Okay, so this is the foundation stick in 2.5N and we're looking really, really good. I am very, very impressed with this so far. First impression, definitely. Let me feel this side. Yeah, it's not completely dried down, but it's not sticky either. It does claim to be hydrating and that's where that's coming from because it doesn't feel dry on the skin. It doesn't feel too, too moisturizing either. It just has a hydration to it and it's not sticky. Okay, so far, so good. Now we're gonna move on to the bronzing stick or the sculpting stick, as they call it. Oh my gosh, my skin looks flawless. It really does. Wowza. Oh, yes, let's remember that this is the primed side and this is the non-primed side. There's nothing about the primer that's affecting the way that this looks, but I will see at the end of the day if it has affected its longevity or anything like that, but application wise and look wise, or even Steven. Moving on to the sculpting stick. It's a hydrating contour stick that blends effortlessly, enhancing your complexion with a natural looking sculpted slash bronze effect for up to 24 hours. Medium coverage, natural, uh, creamy, hydrating, long wearing formula, blends seamlessly into the skin, natural sculpting effect. In one step, it warms your complexion, highlights shadowy areas, and lends striking definition to your facial contours for a customized look that withstands heat and humidity. This stick is $63 Canadian and $47 US. There are four shades. I mentioned three of them are very, very cool, and this is the only warmer one. I fear it might be too warm for me, but we're about to find out. I'm going right in and I'm gonna put a little bit because I don't know how pigmented this is. I'm gonna grab my BK Beauty 109. I love this brush for blending creams and liquids. Okay. Actually, it's not that bad. I was so scared this looked so, doesn't it look so, so warm? But on the skin, okay, and that blended like a dream. That one little swipe did its job. Let's get it on the forehead here. Oh, I think I might've put too much there. But it seems to blend very, very easily, very, very creamy and yeah. Oh yeah, I think that works. That works, definitely works. That's so pretty. Okay, so we're done. Okay, video's over. I'm <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. We gotta do this side of the face. All right, oopsie. Blend that out. Just so you can see in real time how easy it is to work with this. And it doesn't blend away into nothing, you know? It keeps its pigment and you don't, that was just one little swipe. It's very pigmented. How pretty. Do we like it? Do we like it? I think we do. Yeah, oh yes. Get a little on the forehead. Not as much as I did on that side because, oh my God. <laughs> okay, forehead, forehead. Uh, I don't know why. It just seems warmer on my forehead than it does there, but I'll blend it away. Note to self, I think I'll go in directly, just one little bit, and then do my forehead next time I use this. There will be a next time, I guarantee you, because this is beautiful. Yeah, that doesn't look so bad. It's fine. Get my nose a little bit as well just a little bit and i'm going straight into the product and just 
skimming my nose with it. With the tip of this brush here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go again directly. I think I like going with a contour stick or the bronzing sculpting stick. I think I prefer going in with my brush first rather than swiping. You could just control it a little bit more. A little bit here on the gel. Make sure it's blended. I am going to powder only the primed side of my face, leaving this one with completely nothing helping it or adding anything to it underneath it over top of it. So I'm gonna go into the Dior Loose Powder in Light. This is a Refer 22, this ginormous, beautiful fluffy, fluffy brush. Just a little bit of powder. I just wanna see if it makes a difference because to be honest with you, I don't think this needs to be powdered, but I want to see if there's a difference at the end of the day. Make sure I get my forehead here. My nose. T-zone is where I'm concentrating this. I want to leave where the bronzing stick is alone. I don't want to touch it there because I kind of like the glow. Okay, so even though I have powdered, I'm gonna continue to powder a little bit more. There is that glow and that shine that's coming through. It's not in your face. It's very, very subtle. It looks beautiful. All right, so you can definitely see I still have shine here. Allow me to please just powder right here because I don't like that being shiny in this area right here. So I'm just going to tap it right there and then I won't touch the rest of anything else there we go that's better okay I want to finish off this look with some lips I don't have Dior lip liner do they have lip liners I don't even know I'm not, I'm not sure that they do but I could be very very wrong about that so I'm just going to grab my Anastasia Beverly Hills in hazelnut line the lips Then I'm gonna take the Rouge Dior in a new look and add some color. Oh, I love this shade, it's perfection. These are beautiful lipsticks, very comfortable, long lasting, not too dry, not too creamy. They're gorgeous. Oh, forgot blush, someone forgot blush. <laughs> One second. Found it. This is the Dior Rouge Blush in 459 Charnel, which I think will work. Refer 05. And just add a little color to our cheeks. Nothing crazy. Boop on the nose. Get it on this side as well. So pretty. We basically have a full face of Dior. I do also want to take you outside real quick just to show you what this looks like in natural light. Okay, it's kind of cloudy out, but you'll still get an idea, actually probably a better idea versus when it's really, really sunny, but everything just looks so very natural, so beautiful. This is the powdered and the primed side, and this is the non. They look pretty much the same. To me, everything's looking beautiful. I will see you in my final check-in after I'm done my work test. Okay, well, it's been a day. We have a dishwasher issue. Check, it's a daily something. And my husband injured his thumb. Um, I don't want to gross you out with the details, but there was a hospital visit and he's a carpenter and he kind of needs these. You know what I'm saying? Everything's gonna be okay. I'm just saying it's been through it today, you know? I'm about, okay, I put this on. I started putting it on around 10 a.m. this morning, and right now it is 8 o'clock. So maybe like four minutes to 8. So we're looking at a good 10-hour wear. Well, if I can just refocus to think about <laughs> this foundation and this bronzing stick. 
All right, so here are my thoughts. All right, let's talk about the foundation. This is the powdered and the primed side, and this is the nothing side. I only powdered right here. I am getting some shine coming through. After 10 hours, I expect that here, especially in the summertime, it's pretty warm, warm, it's hot. And so um, I get that. So that is not an issue for me. What I wanna say is on the prime side, the longevity, the longevity of the foundation is not affected. So you don't necessarily need to prime this, but what I would do next time, what I would do differently, is use a more of a pore filling, more of a mattifying primer, perhaps my Tom Ford, along with my Benefit Pore Professional, especially right here. And I think using that will be the trick to everything. But having said that, this doesn't look bad. It doesn't look bad at all. This foundation is so lightweight, so natural looking, so beautiful, beautiful glow. It's not too glowy. It's got the perfect amount of luminosity. It's not heavy, it's not drying, and it's not too, too hydrating. It's perfect. I would powder my T-zone personally. And other than that, I wouldn't touch any other part of my face, to be honest with you. You could powder it, but you don't have to because there's a beautiful, beautiful dry down. It is not sticky at all. I would just powder areas where you might tend to get a little bit shiny or have a little bit of or have a little bit of uh, extra oil production. It's blurring, it evens out the complexion. I could see my pores in this area right here, but I didn't use a pore filling primer. I didn't, so that's why. Sorry, just got interrupted. Also have one of my nephews visiting from Greece and I'm in contact with my sister all the time because he's gonna stay with me. He's staying with her right now. We're trying to figure it all out, make sure that his days are fun-filled. Anyway, why do you care? Why am I even telling you this? I'm just telling you it's been a day. It's been a day. I can't remember where I was, but it's very, very easy to use. It's very, very lightweight. It's very, very natural looking. At the end of the day, if you have some pores, I would use a pore filling primer. And if you get shiny, which you probably do, if you have pores, then I would powder in the T-zone. Other than that, it dries down, it's perfect, it's natural, it's gorgeous. I'm very, very impressed with it. And let's talk about longevity. This is supposed to have a 24 hour wear. I cannot do a 24 hour wear test. And uh, unless you know you're a shift worker, uh, maybe you're a flight attendant, uh, maybe you have a job that has a very, very, very long shifts, then that would very much matter to you. But what I can speak to is around the 10 hour mark, I'm looking literally another interruption. One sec. Okay. Focus. Focus. I think even if you are an oily skin type, you're good with this. I really do. It's very, very nice. It's not too emollient. It's hydrating, yes, but it's not oily and sticky. And honestly, I love it. I love it. My skin looks amazing, if I do say so myself. Oh, hmm. sorry. Anyway, it's creamy, but not too creamy is my whole point here. It's lightweight, luminous, but not too luminous. I, I love it. I love it. And 10 hours in, it's looking wonderful. Wonderful. No fading, no nothing. Usually I get a lot of fading around here. Didn't get any of that today. Maybe a little around my chin right here, but I think I was resting while I was, you know, doing like all this stuff today. And that's me. That's me. I think I was touching my chin a lot today, I think. But anyway, it's all good. I love it. Moving on to the sculpting stick, the bronzing contour stick. Like I mentioned, I picked up the only warm shade in the four shade range. And although it looked like it was going to be extremely warm for my liking on the face, it's still there. I mean, it's still there. So that's long lasting too. And it's, it doesn't look too warm for me, but I do think I wanna check out one of the more contoury shades just as an option, 
but really this was so, so beautiful. I prefer to apply the bronzing stick uh, with the brush directly into the product and then to the face, to be honest with you, especially on the forehead. But other than that, I love it. It looks beautiful. It doesn't look as warm on the face as it does in the stick. I was nervous about that. But as you can see, it looks very natural, very beautiful, gives a nice, nice bronze to the face and is still hanging around 10 hours later looking pretty perfect, I have to say. I do wish the shade range was a little bit larger, extended a little bit, I have to say that because this is the only warm option, but it's not a bad option. Uh, but yeah, I would have liked to see a few more shades in the range and that's all I really can say about that. So success, success. Oh, I love these kinds of videos when everything works out. I love having great things to say about the products that I try, A, because I spent my money on them and I'd like for them to be great. And B, it's always great when you find a wonderful product that you obviously can use and I can recommend to you. I love that. So a win, a win. Love them both. One last look, 10 hours in. I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, that is it. That is all. We are done for today. I really hope you found that helpful. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please do consider subscribing to my channel. If you have not already, that would be super awesome. Hit the bell button so that you're notified every time I do post a video and that like button that really helps me out a lot. Thank you again, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.